All right, so today we're gonna be doing some multi-pass welds with stick welding. Okay, we're gonna be using 60-10 and 70-18, and we're gonna be doing three pass and multi-pass welds. I'm also gonna talk about arc strikes and why we should avoid them. We're gonna be at 86 amps for the 60-10 electrode. We're on DC electrode positive. I'm putting in my root pass right now, or my first pass on the T-joint. I'm using a whip and pause manipulation. You'll notice here there's a lot of sparks going on. And so what you want to try to do is keep a really tight arc and that will eliminate a lot of the sparks and focus most of the arc into that puddle. And so here you go. This is that first pass what we kind of want to end up with. Second pass, we're going to overlap that previous weld by halfway. And we're going to cut that weld in half. And then the weld metal that we're going to be putting onto new metal is going to be about an eighth of an inch. So when I chip off that slag, it should come off easy. And I should barely be able to see that first pass with my second pass. And then for that third pass, very similar to the second pass, I'm going to pause a little longer at top. And I'm going to cut that second weld in half and then half of the weld I deposit will be onto new metal on the top leg of the fillet weld. Whip and pause motion, keeping a tight arc so that my slag comes off easy and I don't have a lot of spatter on my plate. Whip and pause about a quarter inch forward and an eighth inch back, really trying to focus on pausing. It's probably the biggest mistake I see is not pausing enough. You should get something that looks like this. Also, you can know that it's, it's even on both the bottom and top fillet weld leg size. Okay, here I'm just showing about positioning yourself and being able to brace with your elbow. Really important. Another important thing is if you're working off of a table, try to get that piece that you're working on close to the end of the table so you can burn a whole stick electrode. Otherwise, you can see how that could cause you to uh, hit your stinger on the end of the table, give you some problems. Now we're going with 7018. This is an eighth inch electrode and we are running at about 120 amps. Okay, we're on DC electrode positive as well. We're keeping a tight arc and we are going in a straight line. Okay, and a technique I learned from watching some videos from welding tips and tricks on YouTube is just that you can almost lay that rod into the joint and let it burn by itself if your amperage is set properly. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm letting it do its own thing, keeping a really tight arc and letting that weld puddle build up accordingly. Biggest problem with stick welding is having too long of an arc. And most of the time, if your settings are right on, you should be able to just put that rod and almost rest it on the plate. Take the weight off of the stinger that you're holding, okay? You can see the slag starting to peel off. That's because we don't have undercut and we're going slow enough with a tight arc. Really easy to chip off the slag and there's no big BBs. If you have those problems and you have undercut, you're probably long arcing it or going too fast. Here's the second pass. Again, we're overlapping about one half to two thirds of the first bead. And then the remaining weld that we're depositing is covering this plate halfway onto new metal. This is what it should look like. Again, that first weld should barely be sticking out, maybe an eighth of an inch you should be able to see of the first weld. And then that third pass, we're sticking everything together. Our angle's gonna change. We're gonna kind of push the uh, metal up more and we're gonna have a shallower angle and we're gonna try to push that weld metal up onto the top plate. So we're gonna slow down, keep a really tight arc and let that weld build up so we get something that looks like this. And you can do more than that and add three passes just by every time you do another succession of welds, you do another pass. So one, two, three, and four, etc. I'm gonna talk about arc strikes, what causes them and why they're bad. So most of the time it's stopping or starting a weld. So in this case, he stopped the weld and I kind of dragged out on the end. That's the most common way when you stop is to have that 
happen is you drag out and strike across outside of the weld zone. So to fix that, you're gonna to try to pull out exactly in line with your stick rod, not from the side. Other ways from starting, okay, striking your arc or restarting, and that happens all the time. So you stick your rod and you break it off and you leave an arc strike. So to fix that, anytime your rod sticks, you're gonna unclip the electrode from the stinger like that, grab the electrode at the base and just snap it off. That way you don't break off a bunch of flux and you can restart your rod. Here's what happens if you put an arc strike outside of the weld zone, you prematurely heat up an area and you can cause stresses that aren't needed, especially on high strength carbon steels. This is extremely critical and can cause failure. Even if the weld is great, if you have an arc strike, you're gonna have problems. So thanks for watching. Please like and comment what you'd like to see next. Thank you.